ever since the invention of the potter's wheel, back in ancient Mesopotamia, we humans have had machines in our lives. The way we interact with these machines has varied over time, but mostly we've used our bodies and our hands. Technology helps us humans in our everyday lives, and it even propels us to the moon. We have just entered the second era of human deep space exploration, and I believe that we are on the brink of the next paradigm shift in human-machine interaction, and it might be used on the moon first. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But first, what is interaction? The Cambridge Dictionary defines interaction as when two or more people or things communicate with or react to each other. We have human object interaction, like when I sip on my glass of water, like when you have your first cup of coffee in the morning, or when you inadvertently push on a door that you were supposed to pull. Then we have human machine interaction. And that occurs when we as humans want to interact with or control any kind of machine. And that's what I'm going to focus on here today. Like when you want to pull a lever to control a crane, if the interaction is designed well and you know what to do, it usually goes right. But this requires some sort of afterthought, training, or practice. A hundred years ago, machines were mostly mechanical in their nature, and they were built in such a way that they require a very specific set of input actions in order to work as intended. It's a simple action-reaction interaction. Then, with the advent of the microprocessor in the early 1970s, we were able to create programmable interfaces. Suddenly, we could choose what button to push or lever to pull and decide what would happen. But with great power comes great responsibility. And since then, we have had to consciously think about how we create these interactions in order to make them intuitive for us humans. In the 1980s, the graphical user interface was introduced, and the mouse and keyboard became the standard on how to interact with machines. It would take nearly 40 years until this interaction was dethroned by the touchscreen as the most widely adopted one. At this point in time, suddenly anyone would be able to control a machine, and you didn't need to be a programmer to do it. During this time, technology has been rapidly advancing. We have suddenly computers in our pockets with so much excess computational power that it can do more than its core tasks. At any given point in time, you have idle processing power, and it's a shame that we don't do more with it, because we could use this processing power to enhance the interaction. In fact, we have more processing power in our pockets than was used for the Apollo missions. So we've come a long way, but there's a long way to go still. Even though we've advanced from analog inputs like buttons and levers into more digital spheres like the touch screens, the paradigm is yet to come. We're now able to equip new machines with sensors, microphones, and other means of sensing the environment. And suddenly we could use that as input methods so our bodies could, beco could become the control system. There is a digital divide where some people proficient in technology knows how to use all of the gadgets that we now carry around, where some might also be left behind. But we can choose to design a different future, a future that is human-centric, where 
interaction with machines is easy, effortless, and letting people in control. We can create a future where humans experience happiness with positive interactions with their environment. But then we need to make human-machine interaction intuitive. And that is what we have been doing at my company for the past six years. We believe that there is a need for a universal translator that can take into account the environment and the context in which an action is performed, and then analyze the human behavior, try to extract the intention behind that action, and translate that into machine command. If we manage to do this properly, we could revolutionize the way humans and machines interact. It will become more visible once technology for extended and augmented realities become more mature and usable. We see headsets, glasses, and other means of adding a digital layer on top of our, our world or merge them all together. My journey into this realm started with a smart glove. It's a sensor-based glove that could control drones. Then it was discovered by Dr. Pascal Lee, a planetary scientist and researcher at NASA, now our friend, who encouraged us to develop this technology for the potential use of exploring the moon, Mars, and beyond. It quickly became the astronaut smart glove. And we used it during a field test with a NASA hot and Mars project where it was integrated into an analog prototype of a next generation spacesuit, replacing the astronaut's need for its conventional controller. We created an interaction system that intuitively let astronauts interact with and control robotic assets in space. And this could be used on Earth as well. So why would this benefit us? Because intuitive interaction with machines would help create a more inclusive world, a world where humans are engaged with and empowered by the use of technology, rather than being estranged in a world where it goes literally out of our control. I envision a future, a future for all of us, where we, as humans, can impact the way we interact with machines. And the choices we make today when designing systems for interacting with technology, we need to think about the humans in the loop. We need to make it human-centric. We believe that human-machine interaction should be universal and on human terms. Thank you.